Kia ora team, welcome to the second video in the Fundamentals of Ecology series. This video is about ecology, biological complexity, and species interactions. In this lesson, you're going to be learning about the levels of biological complexity and abiotic and biotic environmental factors. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to distinguish between biosphere, biome, ecosystem, community, population, and individual. And you should be able to give examples of abiotic factors and biotic factors. Ecology is the study of relationships between organisms and their environment. These relationships involve interactions with the physical environment, also known as abiotic factors, as well as the interrelationships with other species, also known as biotic factors. In this picture, you can see that an abiotic factor is the atmosphere, where gases in the atmosphere interact with the tree. It's abiotic because it's not living. These gases are not living. The biotic factor in this picture is the relationship between two living organisms, the tree and the giraffe. It's a biotic factor because they're both alive. In ecology, Living organisms can be studied at different levels of complexity. These levels are the biosphere, which is the largest level, the biome, ecosystem, community, population, and lastly, the individual, which is the smallest level. The biosphere contains all the Earth's living organisms, whereas biomes are large geographical areas on Earth with similar conditions. Biomes are classified differently depending on which scientists you speak to, but one of the simplest classification system has only two biomes, terrestrial, which is land, and aquatic, which is water. Within these biomes are several ecosystems. Ecosystems are made up of non-living abiotic factors and the community of organisms which interact as a system. And the community is all of the populations of different species. So a community is made up of many different populations. A population is a group of organisms of the same species living in an ecosystem. And an individual is any one organism. So this example shows an African savanna ecosystem made up of non-living abiotic factors like sunlight, wind, air temperature and humidity. In the soil, there are also factors like nutrient availability, soil moisture and pH. In the water, there's factors like dissolved nutrients, dissolved oxygen, pH and temperature. These are all abiotic factors because they're not living. They're part of the non-living environment. In this ecosystem, there's also a community of different populations of living organisms. There's a population of lions, rhinos, gazelles, eagles, fish, and don't forget the plant populations like the tree and seaweed that make up the community of organisms. These factors are biotic because they're alive. All these animals and all these plants are alive. These individuals interact with one another and these interactions are called biotic factors because these organisms are either competitors or predators or they may work together and so on. Now, individuals don't exist in isolation. They all interact with other individual organisms. And these species interactions are really important in determining community structure and composition, as you'll learn more about in the lesson on stratification. But for now, you need to learn some of these species interactions. This is not a comprehensive list, but they're the ones that are most relevant to this achievement standard. Mutualism. Mutualism is the type of species interaction where both species benefit from the relationship. For example, both honeybee and manuka plant benefit from this interaction because the honeybee collects nectar from the manuka flower, which it needs to make honey to feed the larvae in its hive. Meanwhile, the manuka flower gets to spread its pollen to other manuka plants through the honeybee, resulting in sexual reproduction. Commensalism. Commensalism is the type of species interaction where one species benefits and the other species doesn't benefit or it doesn't get harmed from the interaction.
For example, these plants are classed as epiphytes, which means they latch onto other trees to gain higher ground and get better access to sunlight. In this process, they neither harm nor benefit the host plant. Exploitation Exploitation is the type of interaction between species where one species benefits at the expense of the other. I'd like to describe two types of exploitation. One is predation and the other is herbivory. Predation is where a predator kills and eats its prey. For example, the parent of this gannet chick hunted and killed this fish down here and this chick is eating it. So the chick is benefited because it gets food, while the fish is harmed because, well, it's dead. Whereas herbivory is where a herbivore, or an omnivore, like this possum here, eats parts of the plant, but doesn't kill the plant. For example, this possum is browsing the flowers and leaves of this red mistletoe plant. The possum is benefited because it gets food, while the red mistletoe is harmed because it doesn't get pollinated and it loses large parts of itself. It's worth mentioning that when several possums browse on the same plant, that plant can lose enough leaves and die because it can no longer carry out photosynthesis. We're going to cover photosynthesis in future videos. So you're probably wondering, what's browsing? Because you said the word browsing before, and what is it? Well. With herbivory, with eating plants, you can either eat plants via grazing or you can eat plants via browsing. Now, grazing is what cows do. Grazing is eating low-growing plants, so like grass and weeds. Whereas browsing is eating high-growing plants, like this possum eating leaves up a tree. Competition. Competition is the type of interaction between species or between individuals where they compete for the same resources. As a result of this competition, both species or individuals are usually harmed. There are two types of competition, intra-specific competition and inter-specific competition. Intra-specific competition. Intra-specific competition is competition between individuals from the same species. For example, in this small area of the forest, right here, there are at least seven kahikatea seed seedlings. This is intraspecific competition because individuals from the same species, from the kahikatea species, are competing for the same resources like light, water, nutrients from the soil. This competition for resources harms these individuals and in the end, the strongest seedling will outcompete the rest and they may grow to become a tree. Interspecific competition. Interspecific competition is competition between individuals from different species. For example, the kia right here and the possum are from different species, but in this case, they're competing for the same resource, which are red mistletoe flowers. So to summarize, let's look at another example of an ecosystem. This is a cave ecosystem, specifically Waitomo Caves in the North Island of New Zealand. Pause this video and think of the abiotic factors and biotic factors in this community and what populations make up this community. Okay, some abiotic factors in this cave ecosystem are humidity. It's pretty humid in this environment. There's also light intensity and in that it's pitch black in a cave, except for when the glow worms um, are letting out their bioluminescence. There's also temperature in the water and in the air. In the air, it's about 12 to 14 degrees Celsius in the White Homo Caves. How about community? The community of organisms at White Homo Caves include the populations of glow worms and cave wetters. There are also populations of mosquito larvae that get washed into the cave. What are some of the interrelationships between these populations? Well, the glow worms feed on flying insects. That's called predation. And of course, different glow worm individuals are competing for the same food. This is called intraspecific competition. And weta can eat glow worms that fall from the roof of the cave. Another example of predation. 
So I've got a few questions to check your understanding. In this freshwater habitat, you'll find mussels, toe biters, crayfish and mosses. Question one, what level of biological complexity is this? A, ecosystem, B, community, C, population, and D, individual. From August to March each year, around 1,200 pairs of gannets nest at Murawai. Question two, what level of biological complexity is described here? A, ecosystem, B, community, C, population, or D, individual. In this picture, neighboring plants of different species are trying to obtain the same resource. Examples, light, water, and nutrients. Question three, what species interaction is described here? A, mutualism, B, interspecific competition, C, commensalism, and D, intraspecific competition. In this picture, anemone shrimps live within the tentacles of host sea anemones to gain protection from predators. The sea anemone is neither harmed nor benefited. Question four, what species interaction is described here? A, interspecific competition, B, mutualism, C, commensalism, and D, intraspecific competition. In this picture, two lions are fighting for territory and females. Question five, what species interaction is described here? Commensalism, B, mutualism, C, intraspecific competition, and D, predation. Kapai, you reached the end of the video. So by now you should be able to distinguish between biosphere, biome, ecosystem, community, population, and individual. You should also be able to give examples of abiotic factors and biotic factors. The next thing to do now would be to create comprehensive, comprehensive notes using the sentence starters I've put in the critical thinking booklets. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.